할렐루야. <웃음> 
This one is so funny. Thank you for staying awake. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we're going to dive into it. This word, I was reading the word with one of my very good friends. And she had so mm-hmm. much insight on Matthew chapter 7. I was like, mm-hmm. dang. So today, I was like, okay, what am I going to preach? Lord, he said, go back to your book. And he sent me to the three pages of note. Because why she was preaching? Because she was... Uh, you see how people sometimes you're like, um, oh, let's do a Bible study. They're like, oh, no, I have nothing to say. But when they start to talk, you can write three pages. So <laughs> that's exactly what happened. She was she had nothing to say, but I wrote three pages out of what she said. So I'm going to share it with us today. Amen. All right. Amen. In the book of Matthew chapter 7. Um, let's go there. Matthew chapter 7. Sorry, I'm in my car because I'm serving. I'm going to serve at an event tomorrow. So I came to help. And, you know, I'm kind of making myself small, but at the same time helping all that. Trying, trying, too, trying. Too busy. Too busy. Mm. It is well. well. It is your season. It is my season. That's what you better say. Say it again, please. Amen. All right. So Matthew chapter 7, we are from chapter 7 to chapter 12, as we know that passage which says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. So it's not knock and it will be open, but it says the door will be open to to you. Not somebody else. You. And all the people you represent. All the people you uh, you, you represent all the people of the, 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 the family, the entity, the group that you represent. It will be open to you, all of you, because you represent them. So those you don't want to represent, oh, I'm not sure the value oh, is open. So that's why we say interceding for people is important because when you intercede for somebody, you're opening a door for the person you don't even know. Amen. For everyone who has to receive, for the one who seeks finds and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks you for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you, then though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts good gift to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you will have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Amen. What I like is that the Bible say, when somebody, as you ask, you must be ready for people to ask you to. As you receive, it will be good. It's good for people to receive from you. Too. As you seek, you must be ready for people to seek around you too. And you knock at doors, you must be rebel for you. You must be ready for people to come and and knock at your own door. Because mm-hmm. the Bible say, in order do to others what you will have them do to you. So if you're not able to accept that somebody asks you, why are you asking? If you're not able to accept that somebody receives from you, why are you receiving from others? Let's dive into it deeper. So it says, God is giving. And he says that, what I like is that he says, we're going to not go into the order of the verses because the, the way we were talking about it, we were like going just into it. So the Bible says, which of you, if a son asks for bread, will give him a stone? I like the fact that the Bible says son because we all know there's a, dif- there's a difference between child and son, child and daughter. So it's like, there's not, it's like giving is not the same when it comes to a son than when it comes to a, to a child. It's like God, when the son asks for a bread, will not give him a snake, will not give, will give him an actual Amen. We've lost Brother Eve. 
is the is the danger of doing <laughs> the danger of doing the watch somewhere somehow <laughs> is in the car but i hope he was not driving no no he wasn't driving he was parked yeah so something happened to his phone i hope it's not completely discharged yeah i hope not <laughs> how come you're still awake that is a miracle it is a miracle but um so brother eve and i we pray for each other on our birthdays ah. and this to get a hold of him so this is my gift to him this year hey uh, i stayed awake for him the holy spirit though <laughs> Chai. Chai. oh yeah uh, he's my little to... brother that little one he's just so wonderful amen amen yeah, I have three children born on in June. I have mm. Eve, I have my first son, he's born on the seventh, so he turned 25. Oh. And I have my daughter who's turning 20. Wow, Rev. Yeah, I'm 27. I'm almost there. Almost. You have to yeah. pray for me. <laughs> I'm almost at the finish line. <laughs> almost there. I'm telling you. It's Eve who was talking yesterday. He said, now you have to prepare for grandchildren. I said, excuse me. <laughs> I said, like, just give the, me a minute. <laughs> the grandma globe trotter. There's no way you can catch me. Yep. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Don't you. even dream about it. Yeah. So we didn't have a Tuesday too. I'm coming for update. So did you decide something or what is going on? So we've we've decided to I didn't hear you. I'm saying we decided to postpone, but we don't have a new date yet. Okay, okay. When is he finishing his project? Um he was gone. Eve came back. Eh? He said he left. Yeah, he left. Oh. No, he left two weeks ago. He's still got a week to go. Okay. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, you was gone for a while. For a long time? Yeah. Yes. I was speaking in... Is this, this phone is just making me interesting. Yeah. You were so not speaking to us for sure. <laughs> That's so interesting. <laughs> What was the last point that I that I, that I was talking as about? As soon as you started, as soon as it I started, was, it stopped. You had gone. You had gone as far as um when you, when you open when you open the door for when you pray for somebody, you're opening the door for that person. And if if someone ah! asks you for something. So all yes, that I have spoken is okay. Let's 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 start it. I'm sorry. I think it's my phone when I get out of Zoom that puts me out, but it's okay. All right. So what I was saying in the meantime is that the Bible say, if a son asks for something, if a son asks for bread, will you give him a snake? And I like the fact that the Bible says son because we all know that there's a difference between a child and a son, and just tell me if you can't hear me at a certain point because i think as as long as i stay in here it's going to work there's a difference between a child and a son and god says if a son asks me for this i'll give him a certain quality of things but if a child comes it's going to be a little bit different because a son is somebody who is trained educated somebody who is ready for some things but a child is somebody who may not be as ready for those things so when we ask for things, we have to be ready for God to say, you're not ready. We have to be understanding of the fact that God can say, this is too early for you to receive this. I can't give it to you now because you're not ready. Somebody, are you hearing me? Yes. Amen. Okay. So we have to be ready for, for God to say, hey, you're not a son yet. You're not a daughter yet. Or you can be a son or a daughter, but in this aspect of your life, or in what you're asking me, you're not mature enough for me to give you what you're asking me for. As I was saying, if God was to give me this car that I have two years ago, I wouldn't have been ready for it. I wouldn't have the job for it. I wouldn't be, I've been ready to pay for it. I wouldn't have been ready to take care of it. 
I may have even had an accident. Just because I wasn't mature enough in this thing in order to receive what he was ready to give to me. Amen. So let me continue. So there is a way to ask. When you go to God, as I was saying, you don't go and say, God, I want this now. It doesn't work. We don't manipulate God. We are not God's father. We are not God's chief. He is the chief of the church. He is the father. He is the boss. So when you go to ask, be ready to understand that you cannot just ask as you want. Sometimes you have to ask according to what God wants. Amen. Sometimes you can't ask for a Lamborghini when God says you're not ready for that. You know, some people, what they do is that God tell them uh, you can't have this now, but they keep on asking and asking and asking and asking. And what is not good about this is that you go and ask God for something that he already told you you can't have now. Why are we asking God for things that he already told us that now it's not the time to have that. Now it's not the time to receive that. Now it's not the time for us to, to walk in this place. Now it's not the time for us to, 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 to own this type of job, this type of things. Now it's, now it's not the time for us to receive this type of salary. Why? Because God knows us. Why? Because God knows that if he gives us to us too early, we might use it uh, in the wrong way. We might Amen. waste it. Amen. So, we do not, there's a way to ask God, as I said. You don't ask just because you want to receive. You don't ask just because you want, you say, oh, I deserve it. You don't ask just because, you know, some people actually are very surprising. They say, God, I want this. Where is the worship? Where is the, the, the respect for God? Where is the honor due? Where is the reverence to God when you say, God, I want this? I want this. He say, ask and it shall be given unto you. It's true. He say, ask me desire. Yes, it's true. But he say, honor your father. He's a father first. So we must honor him, worship him. You don't just come to God and say, God, I want this. God, I need this. You need it. It's true. But what did you do? Did you serve God? Because here is something. A son has a father. All right. And he says, if a son asks, I will give the right thing. A son has a father. And a father must be honored. And first, before being a, before all those things, you must recognize that he is your father. If he's not your father, if he's not able to correct you, if he's not able to train you, if he's not able to educate you, if he's not able to show you the right things and the right way to do things, I'm sorry, but on what right are we standing when we are not able to, to act as a son or as a daughter and accept education from the father? On what right are we standing to ask? Amen. Before asking, make sure you're a son. Before asking, make sure you're a daughter. Before asking, make sure you're somebody who respects and honors and reverence God Amen. and revere God. Amen. So here's the difference. A child will ask without real understanding of what he's asking. As I was saying, you can give a child a piece of bread or food and the child will throw it on the floor. But you can give a son and the son will understand because you train him enough. Amen. So as parents, or future parents, let's learn how to not give to children something we didn't train them to use. Amen. When you train a child, the Bible say, he will not depart from it. That's the good thing about that is that when you train him God in, in the godly manner, he will not depart from it. Amen. But the Bible, but if we put it in the contrary, if you don't train a child, it will depart from it. Amen. If a child come and ask you for something, if he's not trained, he will get away from it. And even the son, if a son is not trained, he will get away from it. 
-hmm. You can be a son in general, but sometimes you're a child in some aspects, in some domains of life. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to be aware that you're a child first. And secondly, how to understand that God is saying no, because you're not mature enough. I'm speaking to myself too. Amen. <clears throat> Here is my friend who we were talking about this and she said something interesting. She said, I don't ask only to satisfy my desires, but I, but I have to know what to ask for. Amen. Sometimes when we ask, we want to ask according to what we want, but God sometimes wants us to ask specific things. Amen. Because what we have to understand and that what we, we mostly understand is that God knows everything. God has all power, all knowledge. He knows about all those things. But here's something. Somebody may ask, why God knows all that I have to ask again? It's just because there's a principle in the Bible that says, ask and you shall receive. If you don't ask, you don't receive. So it's a little secret for us. When you don't know what to ask, ask God. He will tell you what to ask. Amen. <laughs> Funny enough, but it's true. When you don't know what to ask for, ask God. He will tell you what to ask. Mm. Solomon, when, he was, when God told him, what do you want? He said, I have, I have wealth. I have a kingdom. I have the glory. But I'm working wisdom. I'm sure that somewhere he was like, God, I just know what to ask because I have everything. And he heard wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. And he said, God, I'm lacking wisdom. And God gave him wisdom. And wisdom actually put, came and, and, and brought balance to all that he had. Just because he took the time and he listened to the voice that was saying, from God saying, wisdom, ask for wisdom, ask for wisdom. Or in his heart, because the Lord will not always speak to us with, with his ears. He will speak through, through his heart to say, wisdom, inside oh, wisdom. So do not neglect sometimes when you're trying to ask something, but you feel like it's not the right thing, but you're guided to ask something else. Because sometimes it's God speaking to you saying, hey, you're not asking the right thing. Ask for this. Most of us, if a president comes and asks, what do you need? I need money. We never say, I need a job in, your, in the president, at the president. Because sometimes, we, what we ask for is limited to what we are living on the earth. But we don't, or what we are living at the moment, if I can say. But we don't see further than that. That's why the Bible says, ask, then it says, seek. Seeking is on a longer period. Amen. You say, ask. And because sometimes we ask things according to what we are living right now, he says, seek, meaning do not ask quickly. Take the time to research. Take the time to think. Take the time to, the time to seek God and, 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 and you know, process. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm getting away from my notes a little bit, but, you know, that's what I'm really having the Holy Spirit put in my heart. And then there's another point which says, ask and you shall receive. When you ask, first we say, we have to know what to ask for, but we also have to know how to ask. And there's a point that my friend was making that day. She said, ask with love and respect. Don't just ask because you need. Ask knowing that who, we are, who you're asking to. And how to ask with love and respect. Amen. And then it's, it says, and you shall receive. Sometimes you think that receiving is just, hey, I have it and that's it. No. We have to know how to receive. Amen. 
receiving comes with receiving with gratitude, with acknowledgement of who gave it to you. Either be it a spiritual reception, a physical reception, in both ways, in both um, dimension, realms, you have to know how to receive. In the spirit, I have to know that when I receive, oh, me lifted above all other gods, we lay our crowns and worship you. Lord, I, 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 I bow before you and I thank you. But in this physical realm, expressing that praise is important. Amen. And a simple example of that is when God gives us money, we forget the title of the offering. Giving back to God is a way of receiving. Amen. Giving back multiplies. Let me say it like this. Giving back to God multiplies the blessing. I have a question. Which of us here, if we spend the time offering birthday gift to any to, to somebody and the person never gives us anything or if we spend the time giving something to somebody and the person never gives us anything we, we will be happy either be it as a parent or as a simple human being will you be happy about it no no right so we were made at god's image why are we expecting god to be happy when we don't give him back Lord, we apologize if we have done that. Amen. It pleases God when he knows that his children receive, know how to receive. And it pleases him even more, let me say this, when he knows that his children will know how to manage what they receive. Mm. They will know how to manage the resources they have received. And that's one of the one, I think that's the third hidden part of this passage. Ask and you shall receive. But when you receive, receive correctly and manage it well. Amen. You know, sometimes I regret because God will give me, I will receive my salary. God will do this. You say, do this, do this, do that. He say, do five things. I get to the third, the third thing. I say that. I see that money is starting to be kind of, and... And I, I forget the two other things. And then one month later, that those two other things that were really important will back will backfire on me because there is something that I didn't pay or that I didn't do that is coming back more. I'm like, hey, Jesus, yeah, yeah. this adulthood is a scam. <laughs> <laughs> it but, is. <laughs> but yeah, that's exactly how it works. When you receive, when we receive, we receive, we are so joyful. Sometimes we start to be a big boy. Eh? We receive money. Eh, $2,000. Eh, big boy. Let's go to the restaurant. Let's do, let's do that. I had to learn it the hard way. My first salary, I gave the, the tithe and all that. I went one, two, twice out. I was like, $200 or $300 to go out. That's too much. Then I started to understand. And then I started to say, God, what do you want me to do with the money? You see? So, and he gave me a, a strategy because my job, they say, okay, you can put money aside and all that for parking. And I was like, okay, God, I want to put money there. I want to stay there. And he's the one giving the strategies. When you receive and you submit what you receive to God, some people will, say, will, will think that when we receive it's for us. No, when you receive, submit it to God again and ask him, God, how do I manage this one? Because you gave it to me, it's true. And because you gave it to me, you're the one who have the, 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 the using guide, the use guide. Let's not forget that. When God gives us something, he's the one who has the, he has the, 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 the use guide, right? I don't think that's how you say that. So let's be grateful. Amen. My friend was saying this thing, and I was just shocked when I heard that. She said, gratefulness is something that is supernatural and not natural. Amen. 
Let, we must ask the Holy Spirit to teach us how to be grateful. Amen. We must ask the Holy Spirit to teach us how to, how to be grateful. Because sometimes we are just grateful like that. But God is saying, I need you to be grateful this way. That's why sometimes God will say, hey, in this time, I need you to worship. In this time, I need you to praise. So sometimes people have different ways of expressing gratefulness. And it's okay. But it must be a Holy Spirit filled way. Amen. And let me, let me put it this way. Gratefulness is an attitude in the spiritual realm that will open many doors in the human realm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Gratefulness is an attitude in the spiritual realm that will open many doors in the human realm, in the physical realm. So here is this. Then it says, seek and you will find. Seek and you will find. So as we said, we are not anymore in the, in the punctual question of saying, God, I want this. The punctual request. Now we get into the, 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 a little bit longer search. And it asks for analysis. It asks for observations. It asks mm. for understanding. Mm. Amen. Because in every single situation, there is a different way of, ask, of, of searching, of seeking. You cannot just attack a situation. I like the fact that Ref, Ref P sometimes says that it's not all situations that you deal with the same way. Some situations, God will tell you, speak in tongues for one hour. Somebody will tell you, okay, worship. Somebody will tell you, okay, go to this Bible verse, we don't understand it. Somebody will tell you, okay, I need you to praise. I need you to, to serve somebody, to help somebody. And you will get it. So, seeking is not like asking where you just say, I need this. Seeking will ask you to be attentive to the answer of God. Mm. Mm, amen. Seeking will ask you to be, at, to be attentive to God's answer. Because, it's a, because in that process, we have to associate the Holy Spirit to associate with the Holy Spirit. Because it's that process that will help us, that will ease the process of knocking. The process of seeking eases the process of knocking. If you can't seek correctly, knocking will be hard because you will not know exactly where to, where to, where to um, knock or where to just punch and it will be opened. Hallelujah. Amen. The reason why seeking becomes easier is because we associate the Holy Spirit. And the reason why knocking becomes easier. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. The reason why seeking becomes easier is because we associate the Holy Spirit. And the reason why knocking becomes easier is because we were able to seek and analyze with the Holy Spirit correctly. Amen. Amen. When you ask, the Holy Spirit will show you what process to follow in your, in your search. The thing is that sometimes we ask and when it doesn't come directly, we are frustrated. But the Lord is saying, ask. Then he says, seek. He didn't say ask and stop and frustrate yourself. Ask if it doesn't work or if it needs more, seek. Amen. And while you seek, it will show you exactly where to knock or where to touch, what door to push for it to open. And this is as much for spiritual things than for secular things or even professional things. Let me tell you this. Some jobs or the job where I am right now, I wanted to get another job before. Like, because money-wise, the other job was like, twice what I was supposed to get here, what I'm getting here. Almost twice, no, one and a half, sorry, not twice. Not exaggerate, one and a half. 
And I was like, okay, God, I'm saying that. But the Lord said, and I stayed home for two months. I was like, God, I'm tired. I want to work. He says, wait. I waited. And this job came. And this job took two months in order be, before I can get in. But he still said, wait. When I got into this company, first day or second day, I go and I greet the CEO. Two weeks after or three weeks after, the DCO is going, but I have the honor to see him before he goes and I exchange LinkedIn with him. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I meet people from Cote d'Ivoire, I meet different from Togo, I meet people from Senegal, I meet people going to Nepal. I'm like, hey. And God is the one telling me, son, do this like this. Don't talk about this. Do this. Let me tell you, for the when I met... Um, I'm not going to talk about it because that's a secret with God. Amen. But still, he's the one telling me, do this like that. Do this like this. He knows how to guide us in order to take us to the result expected. Amen. I asked for a job. But he is taking me to the right door to push. And he's showing me where to, where to, where to push, where to knock in order to get to the right door. Professionally speaking, and this is a big secret. You're frozen, Mr. Eve, we can't hear you. Hello. Kick himself out again. You can hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Rev. He's still on the line, but it's like the network maybe has frozen. Yeah, and the thing is he's speaking perhaps and he thinks we can hear him. Yeah. Mm. Um, it's your phone. This thing to do is maybe... Oh, he left, so he's coming back again. It's annoying. You see why sometimes I, I send you the thing because I know yes. that. Mm -mm. Yeah. And when you mess up your class, it's difficult to, to, to upload the teaching after. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's definitely dropped off. Mm -hmm. Hello. Now yeah, you please. mute yourself. Hey, okay, sorry. My, um, I think my internet just kind of went off and on. But yeah, I was saying, I was saying, I was talking about the, the job, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was saying, professionally speaking, when we ask for a job, we must be ready for God to guide us in, in, as we seek more. Because... Nobody here is going to tell me, especially as as adult who being as it is, I'm getting, I'm looking for a job just to be kind of stable. I want to go higher. I'm young. I want to go higher. And because I want to go higher, we want to follow what God, the direction God is giving. Amen. Amen. And... <clears throat> And I want to say something that may sound a little bit weird. But we are in a time where asking will be hard, but seeking will be easier. We're in a time when we will feel like asking is harder. Like God is not giving. But seeking will become easier for us. And as we seek, more doors will open. Amen. And as we said at the beginning, when, an op when, an, when the door will open for me, for you, for our leaders, for people around us, it will open for the people we represent. So ask and it shall be given, seek and you shall receive. Amen. Amen. So I'm almost, I'm almost at the end. Please bear with me. Sometimes, in the process of God's exhaustment, 
or exhaustment of the prayer. We can be under the impression that we are fighting alone. And I want to say this. Why are we sometimes under that impression is that under the, the impression that we are fighting alone in that process is that sometimes we, 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 we take so much pleasure in our personal exploits and personal accomplishments that we forget that if we're able to do this because there's somebody who paid the price and somebody who is with us Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. But the good thing about that is that the love of God did not change because of what we, do, we did. The love of God didn't, is not changing because of the fact that we asked with, with arrogance sometimes. The love of God did not change because of the fact that sometimes we forget that when it doesn't work, it doesn't mean we should stop and be frustrated. His love does not change. It doesn't depend on what I do. The love of God is constant. It's the same one. Because the Bible says Jesus is the inherit, Jesus is the one with the inheritance, but we are co-heir with him. Amen. So we share something with Jesus, especially the love of God. God loves us at a hundred percent. It's not a partial love. He loves us. Even if you're a sinner, he will love you. He loves you and he will still love you. He created you, so he has love for you. What father, if he creates somebody, will hate the person? That person is not a father. He's just a person who gave birth. It's a father, but God is a father. A person who takes care of you, no matter how you behave. He's my father, he's my mother, he's everything. He just takes care of me, loves me. And I'm going to add this to almost finish. We must ask God whatever we want or whatever we need. But it's not, it doesn't mean that we're going to receive it always. But we, not, we don't have to be afraid to, of asking him. Amen. God wants a relationship. With the, the, from father to son, from father to daughter, with us. Amen. When God, and this is a point that is very important to finish this teaching, is that as much as we ask and we receive, the Bible say, whoever asks, receives. Whoever includes God too. Are we, uh, do we agree on this one? Amen. So if God asks you, he must receive. <laughs> yes. If God asks, he must, if he asks for worship, he must receive worship. If he asks for $10,000 from your bank account, he must receive the $10,000. Because when we ask, he gives. Amen. So if he, if whoever includes God, when God asks you, he must receive. Amen. Amen. It's not always about asking to always. It's about giving to. And I like this part of the Bible because it challenges our giving. It challenges our, 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 our sharing. Especially our sharing with God. Because sometimes we forget that God also needs us. It's not that he can't do with us, but he, he, he needs to keep that relationship going. Amen. Relationship means relating, relating to people linked. It's like a tie. And if those, if the, in a relation, there's always two or more. Amen. So if I'm always giving to somebody and the person does. Again. Minister Eve, if you can hear me, you're frozen. I 
day. Ooh, yeah. We will sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will sing. Hallelujah. Every knee will bow down. Every tongue confess and say. Hallelujah. Every down, every tongue compass and say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, say, Hallelujah. Okay, I'm sorry, like, because is messing up with me but it's okay so i was almost done with my teaching and i was just saying that when god asks we must give him to right can you hear me amen amen okay so yeah but so i was just saying that when god asks for something because he's part of that whoever whomever asks will receive we must know how to give to because it's not about it's not only about asking, it's about giving. It's Amen. So, simple. so, as we don't find limits asking God, let's not be surprised that God will ask us stuff that seems crazy to us sometimes. I remember one day I had 450 in my account. He says, take, take 400, send to your family. I was like, hey, God. <laughs> but not knowing that those 400 will multiply by three or four and pay for all that they needed at that season. Wow. And you shall receive. He's also saying somewhere, when you ask, be ready for me to ask you to. Amen. Amen. May God bless Amen. us. May God keep us. And if you have any question, we can discuss that right now. Amen. Thank you so much for the teaching, Brother Eve. It was really wonderful and so refreshing. It's been a while since I heard you teach. And I think you're frozen again. I think maybe um, turn off your video. If you can hear me, turn off the video. It might increase your internet bandwidth. I think the spot he chose to to teach was not the best. Yeah. 
Mm. That's why it has a weakness of Wi-Fi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hope the Lord sees our struggle to get the word out to the rev. Amen. <laughs> I hope he sees it. <laughs> You know, when, when I was... I'm um, sorry, I'm just in, the in and out. No problem. Brother Eve, I think turn off your video. It will increase your bandwidth. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I just turned it off. But yeah, my teaching came to an end. I hope you were blessed by it. I'm sorry, this is a very car carpool teaching, kind of, you know, like <laughs> we're doing it the old style. Because right now I'm, I'm at that event and they're getting ready in there. I just slide outside. I was like, I have to give this out. So yeah, if you have any question, any comment, let's have it. Then we can just pray and close. Amen. I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for such a wonderful word and so simple and yet so profound. And um, I came actually to the realization as you were teaching that we have three modes of asking Mm. of praying actually it's three ways to pray one we pray with our mouths Mm. when we ask Mm -hmm. two we pray with our hands when we knock Mm -hmm. and three when we seek we seek with our eyes and with our hearts Mm. so those are the three um channels that the lord has given us to be able to pray Mm -hmm. so if i can't pray with my mouth i know my eyes and my my heart and my hands can still pray and that is truly such a wonderful revelation for me so Mm -hmm. thank you amen 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 glory to god thank you thank you me myself i didn't see that way why you just taught me something glory to god (laughs) hallelujah hallelujah Anybody has something to add, something to say or ask? Okay. Hallelujah. We will sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh, we will sing, hallelujah, and every knee will bow down, and every tongue confess, and sing, hallelujah. And every knee will bow down, and every tongue confess, and sing, hallelujah, hallelujah, we will sing, hallelujah, Father, we want to thank you and bless you for tonight, Lord. Thank you for this word that impacted again, that personally impacted me and changed the mindset. Thank you again for the change of mindsets, for for the renewal of ideas, the renewal of 
of the of the top system. Mm -hmm. This is a time for us to reflect on ourselves or how we relate to you. And today we spoke again that we shall relate to you differently. So give us the grace and the strength to do so, Lord. We apologize and we ask for forgiveness. If any time we didn't ask correctly, we ask with pride. If we didn't seek in the meantime, and if we didn't knock or even if we didn't associate the Holy Spirit, and it's time for us to reflect and to change. So please help us and strengthen us in order for us to change. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for the mercy. Thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for tonight. We bless the nights of each of us. And we bless those watches that are to come and the watches that are already passed. Yes. Thank you for your grace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So you guys have a wonderful night. And you too, Brother Eve. All the best with the event. Amen. From a 23rd years old. Good night. Ah, you're an old man now. Ah, I'm a great, I am graced. I'm not old. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Have a God good night. God bless you. God bless. Take care. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.